I'll just, uh, I'll pray now. Our great God, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be together on this uh, Advent joy. Where we can celebrate, where we can rejoice, we can um, take to heart um, your purposes and uh, what you have intended for us to be part of and how we should approach it and that we can become uh, truly who we are in a joyful state. And we just pray for your spirit to lead us today, and we ask this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So. Oh. You're welcome. Okay, I'm very joyful now. <laughs> I, I got to compose myself once again. Um, anyway, let me thank you. So, um, again, can we re rekindle a night, the joy of the season, uh, and, can, and continue it into next year? And when you think about the when you think about the incarnation and you think about um, looking back and the experiences say Mary the shepherds and the wise men had and that those events uh, they got to be part of that what was going on in their hearts and minds they were brought into those events and they were able to um, encounter really a supernatural uh, a supernatural change within them and you take Mary uh, realizing and be spoken to by an angel that she would bear the Messiah and the joy that was in her and in her Mary meeting uh, Elizabeth and greeting Elizabeth and the baby jumping up and leaping and, Mary, and Elizabeth being filled with the Holy Spirit. And you think about that. And then, of course, um, the shepherds out in the fields, well, we don't know still who was taking care of the sheep when the shepherds left, but the angels greeted them, said, this is a good news. We have ti good tidings. And it will be a cause for joy for all the world. So you can see there, in some sense, their, their joy was kindled. And as they move towards uh, Bethlehem to view and to experience the birth and to see Jesus and how that came to like a, a completion of joy in them. Um, we, so now let's look at the text. Uh, we're going to go through 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, 16 through 24. Okay, uh, rejoice always, pray continually, uh, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. We'll continue on. Do not quench the spirit, uh, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all, hold on to what's good, and reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. Um, may your whole spirit, soul, body, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you and is faithful. He will do it. So I forgot to put that this is in the context of Paul speaking to the Thessalonians about the day of the Lord and how to be prepared and what, what should be happening in their lives, that they need to stay alert, awake. Same with us today. So it's in that context that this is being spoken. Um, also to uplift and encourage one another. Very important things. If Thessalonians needed direction and help, and we do today to think about those things. So we'll back up here. We'll take note of something. First of all, it says rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. And it says in, in God's will. And that's a indicative command. Uh, it is uh, it, it demands a summons, a response from us, imperative. 
how do how do we respond to that? Uh, it is it is God's will that we rejoice and we do th these other things. Um, uh, so when you think, for this is God's will for you in Jesus Christ. Uh, Give thanks in all circumstances. The question is, how can we? Uh, how can we rejoice? Uh, put on a happy face and, uh, you know, don't be a Debbie Downer. Don't be a killjoy. And kind of go through the motions of joy. And somehow that will, that will be our response to God's command to rejoice always. Well... Well, what do we think of joy? What, what really is the source? Um, when we think of, when we think of joy, I, I think we think more of happiness. And the two kind of, if, if you take happiness, it kind of runs alongside sadness in this life, where you may have maybe happy thoughts about Christmas past, uh, being with family and friends and really uh, enjoying that time. And that would bring you joy. But the flip side of that is, you know, yeah, but the circumstances that I find myself today or even reflecting back in the past bring back not-so-happy memories um, to where happiness and joy are, are like, it's almost like happiness is this pool and it lasts for a while, this water in this pool, and then it dries up and evaporates. Um, we're in joy. It's deep down in the reservoirs, uh, sort of like a spring that you have to tap into. Um, again, can we create joy? Not really. Um, we can receive gifts and be happy, but it's not circumstances determine what what it it's like having all the planets line up before you really can have happiness or joy um, and then, then it can be taken away in an instant and that seems like our life we go through these you know on advent joy you know it's like can we it's not like we try to work it up we can't really do that um, Verse 23, God himself, the God of peace, may he sanctify you through and through and, and make us whole. Um, it's much deeper, this type of joy that we have, that God truly is the source. And because it says in God's, God's will, in Christ Jesus, that's who we look to. Um, John 15, 9 through 11, Father, as a father has loved me, I've loved you. Now maintain, uh, remain in my love, my commands, uh, keep, keep my commands, remain in my love, just as I kept my Father's commands to remain in his love. I have told you this, that my joy may be in you, and it may be complete. So there's something going on here. Um, when you think of that, that really, it's a relational thing. It's you're growing into uh a deeper relation with God, and you can experience more of this joy. It's a joy that you can't, circumstances don't dictate that. Um, it's a joy that is, it's grounded in God's peace, and it's wrapped, it's wrapped around you in comfort. It's, it's joy, but it's, it's different. Um, circumstances, again, do not, cannot, don't let that take away the joy that you have and can experience with God. Um, and don't let no, no other outside force, whatever you want to call it, come in and, and try to tell you differently. Um, Diedrich Bonhoeffer uh, went uh, through his last stages of his life in a Nazi prison, 
and he wrote quite a few letters. Uh, this was um, this was a poem he wrote. I like to read that. Um, By gracious power, so wonderfully sheltered, and confidently waiting, come what may. We know that God is with us night and morning, never fails to greet us each new day. Uh, yet it is the heart by this old foe tormented. Still evil days bring burdens to, hard to bear. Oh, give our frightened souls the sure salvation for which you, O Lord, taught us to prepare. And when this cup you give, you give is filled to the brimming, with bitter suffering and hard, hard to understand. We take it thankfully without trembling, out of so good and a beloved hand. Yet when again the same world, in the same world you give us the joy we had and the brightness of your sun, we shall remember the, all the days that we lived through and our whole life shall be yours alone. Don't let anybody take the joy you have within the relationship of God away from you, or to say otherwise. And First Peter, though you've not seen him, you've loved him. You have loved him, even though you have not seen him now. Do not see him now, and you believe him, and you are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. Um, the more we grow in our relationship with God and through the Spirit, uh, through the Spirit in Christ, we'll experience a deeper joy. And we, this is a season to celebrate it and reignite it. Um, we have a eschatological, eschatological joy, which means in a bigger sense, in a bigger context of things, uh, the way this is framed, we have the knowledge of our futures. We know about salvation. We know about a new heaven and earth. We know um, Jesus is present with us now. Uh, we know that uh, we will see our loved ones again. Those are included in this joy that we carry with us, that the future, we have what we have now, but we also have this future. Nothing can take that away from us, and this joy brings it to us. Again, we know the end of the story, and Jesus has won, won it over for us. We were created for joy, and that's the bottom line. And even though things sometimes get really weird and strange in our lives, especially towards the end of the year, and Christmas has, brings out a lot of negative emotions and things, but you need to tap into the true joy that is available and present with you through prayer. Uh, giving thanks in all circumstances. And that joy will lead you through this coming year and right right now. And we get to do that with our Christmas party today. Um, so with that, uh, that's truly God's desire for you, to, for all of us, to really um, wipe away uh, this any disillusion that, uh, that this joy is something that can be taken away from us because it can't. So with that, we'll have communion and pastor tomorrow.